ask it of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You guys have Amen. A great Thank you, uh, Lance and Amanda, for everything they do around here. Amen. And um, uh, so uh, if you got your Bibles, go ahead and pull them out with your notes. Um, I want to introduce today uh, a very, very special, uh, let me put this up there, very, very special um, uh, folks to me. And uh, we, matter of fact, I threw Pastor Tim McNamee, some of you may have heard his name before, I threw a curveball at him about 6 o'clock this morning, 6.15 um, this morning. Uh, uh, Dustin, Pastor Dustin, our Coleman campus pastor, calls me and uh, he says, Brad, he said, I'm not feeling well at all. Uh, our children's pastor in Coleman uh, tested positive for COVID and uh, the youth ministry down there was on a weekend retreat. And so they were already um, kind of just uh, scattered. And uh, so I, I told Dustin, I said, well, I said, perfect scenario because we had Blue Tassel Farms and um, is one of the missions group that we support. They were going to be a part of first service with Coleman and then be here for second and third service. Um, and then we had this snow apocalypse that y'all saw come in this morning, right? 18 feet of snow and us. I'm just playing. Uh, us Alabamians. So they're from Indiana. This, uh, uh, the Magnemies, the, uh, the Alabamians, we just freak out when it snows. Come on, somebody. How many non-freaker outers are in the room this morning? And uh, you did not go buy milk. You know, if you went and bought milk and bread, no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. We still love you. And, uh, but uh, the bread and milk's gone from Kroger in, in uh, hometown. Um, but uh, Pastor Tim, yet last night, he said, uh, is it snow what? And he, they, they get like two foot of snow at a time up there. Um, and so uh, anyway, this is one of the missions group that we support here as a local church. Um, and they were going to be here with us this service and, and uh, share a little bit about Excuse me. Share a little bit about the ministry, what we're supporting them doing, and then also an invitation that we're going to be taking a missions trip. It's local. This will be stateside up to Indiana, uh, March the 28th through uh, the second or third of um, April there. And uh, so we would love to support them. They mentor and create retreats for inner city kids, um, and it's it's really a great program. I, I we could take a, a lot of time to. Um, expound more on that. So here's what I'm asking you guys to do. As you exit today, they've got a table set up right in the front left, and they are uh, be there, uh, Jacqueline and James. Uh, so Jacqueline's Pastor Tim and Kathy's daughter. James is their son-in-law. They'll be there to talk. But Pastor Tim, uh, 615 this morning, agreed to step in and preach both services for us down in Coleman. Uh, so we kept Chris here with us and uh, just filling in the gaps wherever we can do it. So uh, Blue Tassels Farms, they, they're a great ministry, great organization. I encourage you um, to uh, check out their table. As you leave today, if you're interested in going on a, a stateside mission trip, you don't have to have a passport. Uh, you don't have to get... Uh, vaccine checked, all that good stuff that uh, some uh, overseas trips that we've done, um, and you'd love to say, hey, I'd love to go help and be a part, you can check that out. All right, so if you got it, say, I got it. Come on, somebody, take your life notes out with me this morning. We're going to jump into week number three of our message series entitled Holy Habits. Right now, I want you to help me um, because I knew that uh, today would be a heavy live stream day. I, I, from the depth, deepest part of my heart, thank you for those who are in the auditorium with us um, and those who are watching via a live stream. If you'd have told me five years ago uh, that, that uh, a major part of communication, the gospel, would be via live stream, I'd be like, you're crazy. And, uh, but I'm thankful for technology. We can redeem it. I don't know you'll ever be able to replace gathering together. So it's good for us to gather together in the house of the Lord. Can I get an amen? Something about corporate worship. But for those who need to worship with us via live stream, we're honored that you would tune in with us this morning. We celebrate. We hope that you're safe, you and your family, whatever situation might have caused you to stay at home. We're praying for you, and we love you. Amen. And uh, can y'all show them a little bit of love this morning and uh, put your hands together and say, uh, hey, we care about you. We're, we're, um, we're honored. So we look forward for you joining us back in person. I don't think we'll ever be able to replace um, our in-person worship. But uh, with Holy Habits, we have went through the first two Sundays of this year, and we've talked about the why are holy habits, and we've talked about the what, and we've uh, talked about those rhythms, and, and back in November, how we have um, always pretty much declared and said, hey, uh, that we're going to do a time of prayer and fasting, and so we'd start each year, these last 12 years of Life Church Coleman and the Life Church Hearts will be in existence, we'd always start every year um, really trying to consecrate ourselves to the Lord, and it's completely biblical. 
Uh, Daniel chapter 10 talks about a 21-day prayer and fasting. Isaiah 58 talks about the fast that breaks the chains of bondage to sin off your life. In the New Testament, Jesus gives us clear instruction. He doesn't say, if you fast, <coughs> excuse me. He actually says, when you fast. That fasting is a biblical um, uh, practice. It's a biblical discipline that we should embrace in our life. Worship is a biblical discipline. Uh, prayer is a biblical discipline that as New Testament followers of Christ we should have in our life. Giving is a biblical discipline that we should be practicing as New Testament believers. Can I get an amen? All right? It's not if, it's when. They should be attributes of our character and who we are and that we embrace. In November, I was praying. I said, Lord, what do, what do we need to do in January and just really uh, steer my heart in the direction it needs to go? And I um, know that uh, as clear that as he led and as God in me and anything we've ever done here at the church, I knew that we needed to start the year not calling a holy consecration fast, not calling us to 21 days of prayer and fasting, but calling us to a lifestyle. Come on, everybody say lifestyle. <laughs> calling us to a lifestyle of Holy habits that birth and create who God has called you to be. Your who of saying, I'm called to be a man of God. I'm called to be a father that uh, leads and guides my kids. I'm called to be a husband. I'm called to be a pastor. That I uh, embrace the rhythm of a lifestyle that helps me. See, it does not do you any good, my friend. We're all guilty of going on a diet for 21 days. You lose some weight. You feel better. And at the end of that 21 days or that 30 days or 45 days, ever how long you uh, eat right and you eat healthy, you immediately revert back to some old habits, some old rhythms, some old strength structure in your life and you find yourself doing what you had before and truly there was no value in that 30 or 40 days that you tried to have good habits. And so today we want to do this. Here's our big idea this morning. We want to really, and I wish I could underline this, we want to develop a lifestyle of holy habits. <coughs> Excuse me. When we say habits, over these next few weeks, and if you were not here the week one or week two, I would encourage you to go download and listen on the, our YouTube channel. Go listen to week one and week two of this message series. is just a foundation to build upon. But there are some attributes of habits that you and I need in our life. There's bad habits. There's good habits. And we're all creatures of habit. Statistics tell us 80% of the people, the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning, within the first 15 minutes, you pick your phone up and you scroll through to see who has text messaged you or what's your latest social media or what's trending right now. We all have habits, whether we want to admit it or not. We have a habit of what we do before we go to bed. We have a habit of what we do when we get up in the morning. We have a habit of how we spend our free time. We have a habit of how we respond whenever maybe somebody gives us pushback or does what we don't like in our life. We all have habits, and if we truly want to see transformation in our life, we need to not have moments of transformation. We need to have transformation in the habits and the lifestyle that we live. Are you with me today? And so while prayer, all that's incredible and that's awesome, we embrace it. I believe the Lord said, Brad, let's call life church. Let's, let's embrace a, a holy habits that aren't just what we turn on and off, but it becomes who we are. Are y'all with me this morning? Y'all on board? Y'all ready to jump in? And so a lifestyle of worship. What do you mean by worship, Brad? And it's kind of a funny animal when you start talking about worship because the moment you say worship, you begin to think about uh, things like this right here. You begin to, oh, that's worship, right? Is this worship? Yes, but this is not worship all-inclusive. Worship's a lot broader than what we like to think. Worship encompasses how you act, how you live. And we're going to talk about this before we land this plane today and we dismiss. It's every area of your life that you offer your life, your heart, your mind, your thoughts, your words, your gifts, your talent, your stewardship. Every area of your life is worship. Some might also think that worship is uh, back up, see some of y'all gonna be like, he, I told y'all he didn't like hymns. He just clicked right through that deal, right? Say, oh, no, worship only comes on the back of a red back hymnal. And you love to sing verses one and uh, uh, two and four, and some reason poor verse number three always gets ignored. Nobody ever wants to sing it, right? Anybody grow up singing hymns besides me, right? We're gonna sing verses one, two, and four, and just skip little O three because it doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, 
that battle happens. Hey, worship, true worship, Brad, is, is overhead transparencies on the screen. True worship is uh, Bill Gaither in the Southern Gospel. True worship is Elevation and Graves to Garden. True worship is, is Bethel uh, School of Ministry uh, in their CD they worship. True worship is, is maybe back in the, the mid-90s, and you start thinking back to some of the Hosanna and the, the, those companies that were producing praise and worship. Can I help you today is I want you to walk out of here with a true understanding of what worship is and what worship isn't and how you and I need to embrace a lifestyle. Come on, everybody say lifestyle. So you're going to get it with me today. A lifestyle of worship. Does hymns, does songs and choruses, does music play a part when it comes to worship? The answer is absolutely, undoubtedly yes. But I want you to write there. You can kind of write these on the back of your paper. I didn't put these in your notes. What worship this morning is, uh, my little clicker things. there you go. Here's our big idea. Worship is not just something we do. It's a lifestyle of how we live. Worship becomes my lifestyle. It's that I realize everything I do, everywhere I go, everything I say, everything I think, how I act, how I treat people. Maybe how you reject and ignore. Maybe how you embrace gossip and negativity and slander inside of your life. My friend, are you worshiping yourself or are you worshiping him? Because at the end of the day, we all worship something or someone because we were created to worship. You don't think we have a worship culture and lifestyle? Did anybody watch the game this past week? <laughs> All right, they were worshiping around a pigskin. I, 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 I clapped and cheered and jeered just as, just as much. But what is worship? It's giving my adoration, my affection, my attention to an object or a person. Matter of fact, uh, in the New Testament, um, I'll back this. Francis Chan, I love, he's one of my favorite speakers and authors. He said this, of a regular church goer, uh, maybe somebody walks out of the sanctuary today and they say, you know what, I didn't like worship today. That's okay, because guess what, my friend, we weren't worshiping you anyway. Y'all with me? That it's not about your likes and dislikes. Matter of fact, the New Testament word for worship is pro secunio, and I don't know if I'm saying it right, and neither do you, all right? So it's okay. And, uh, so uh, what does it mean to worship? It means to bow down, to lay prostrate, to pay homage, to pay respect, to show profound respect. It's that that gets my affection, my adoration, and my attention. That is why movie stars at times will get the worship of their fans. That is why there are sports and uh, uh, hobbies that will get our adoration, affection, and our attention. That it becomes the source and the affection of our worship. So every one of us in this room, I don't care if your personality is to worship exuberant or your personality is to worship quiet and reserved. Every one of us in this room, you were created to worship and you are worshiping something or someone. It's just the way it is. And today I want us to really wrap our arms around, if you're going to be a New Testament believer and a follower of Christ, that you say, Lord, help me to be a worshiper of the one true God. Help me to be a worshiper that worships in spirit and in truth. That, God, I've got a heart of worship. That I'm spoken of as God spoke of David. and said, he's a man after my own heart. How does that happen and how does that take place? This morning, I put three, or uh, um, I'm going to give you a few things that worship is and a few things worship's not, and I'm going to give you three uh, ways that we can truly embrace what worship. Worship is always about the Lord. So what do you mean? True worship. Not worship that has been watered down or filtered, manipulated, or guilt trip. It is always about Him. So what happens in us in society today is there's moments that we feel like worship becomes about us. It's my preference. It's my style. And don't get me wrong, my friend. I have, I've got songs that I would rather hear sung than other songs because we all have opinions and we all have personalities and we all have styles. The staff, when we pray together on Thursday mornings, they don't let me pick out our prayer music to pray to on Thursday morning. They hurt my feelings. Pastor Curtis saying amen. He hurt my feelings. And so if I want to pick out the prayer music, I get to get there really early and like say, don't touch the soundboard, right? That's why, because maybe there's particular style, and, that, and that's okay. There's songs of your salvation that maybe you cut your spiritual teeth on, and that's completely fine. Can you not be mature enough to realize that there are styles and differences, and, and just because you like one over the other don't make somebody else's less spiritual than yours? Are you with me today? That's just, that's maturity. Be a mature believer. 
That's just the, the way it is. But what is it is that worship always does not point to you. It points to him. So if somebody's ever standing on the stage or somebody's even in the audience and they're drawing more attention to themselves than they are to Jesus Christ, my friend, that is not worship. That is performance. Are you with me today? That we're here to point towards one person and his name is Jesus. We're here to give adoration, affection, and attention to one person, and his name is Jesus. And so today that I realize what worship is and what worship is not, worship is always about the Lord. Worship is about giving God all of the honor that is due his name. It's the fact that he does not change. Do you realize God cannot get any better than he already is? God can't get any stronger. God can't love you one ounce more. God can't be more graceful. God can't be more blessing. God can't get any bigger, stronger, or more able than he is right now in your life. Now the challenge is, is in the middle of worship is I recognize who he is and I give him the adoration because he, my friend, even when I don't see that you're working, even when I don't understand what's happening and taking place, even when I don't feel you, God, I know you're still able and control. Are you with me this morning? It's what God worship is, is saying, God, I'm going to give you the honor that is due your name. Well, what if he's not doing what I think he should be doing? It doesn't matter. It's not about you. It's about him. What if he's not answering my prayers? It don't matter. It's not about you. It's about him. What if I just kind of, it doesn't matter. It's not about you. It's about him. It's about giving him the, all the honor that is due his name because he is that good. Worship is a lifestyle of living that brings glory to God. Too many times it's easy to come in and sing our favorite song. We walk out the door and go to our, our restaurant And we leave our worship in the room, and we'll pick it back up next Sunday. But the truth is, we're supposed to worship in spirit and in truth when we walk out of here. Are you with me? It's either a lifestyle or it's a lie. Quote that, Twitter that, put that on your Facebook, all right? It's a lifestyle or it's a lie. God, I want our worship to become a lifestyle. This is who you say that that, that we, so we know who you are in our life. Worship is not, I'm going to give you three things real quick. The worship's not, what's it not? It's not a style of genre or music. Is music part of worship? Absolutely. But it's not a style or a genre of music or words on the screen. It's not something that only happens in a church service. Worship is not meant to be confounded to the four walls of this building. Are you with me? Amen, oh me, it's okay. Just pick one and, and go ahead and say it today. Worship's not, I'm going to worship. Guess what, my friend? Worship needs to be a part of our everyday life. It's who we are. What else is worship? Worship is not about our preferences, our likes or dislikes. We talked about that. Worship is not about our wants and our needs. That we don't come with our agenda. We don't come with our laundry list. But at the end of the day, we say, Lord, I'm here just to focus on you. And that's what's amazing about our God. Can I teach you one of the greatest spiritual principles you ever learn as a New Testament follower of Christ? Whenever you learn to quit looking at your problems and quit looking at your issues, and God, I worship you. God, I worship you. I wish you'd do something. And you get your attention off of your issues, and you get your attention on who he is, my friend. It's amazing how the mountains melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. It's amazing how all of a sudden seek you first the kingdom of God and everything else be added unto you, how God would just supernaturally work out whenever I get my attention and my affection and my focus in the place that it needs to be. Are you with me this morning? Say, God, I'm focusing on you. I'm, I'm giving my attention and my affection. Well, what about my problems? What about my, <coughs> excuse me. What about my struggles? What about my, my, that person who's getting on my nerves? What about that gossip? What about that slander? What about those, those unpaid bills? What about that lack in my life? My friend, if, it's amazing whenever I get my focus where it needs to be, how God transitions, transforms, and changes us. And he'll change our heart. Worship keeps our focus on him. I love this. Watch this. We're fixing to jump in right there where you can start taking notes. Worship keeps my focus on him. Number one there in your notes. It's kind of like a radio. Do you realize sitting here right now, there are thousands and probably even in the tens of thousands, waves and frequencies that are flying around our head right now. 104.3. WZYP is flying through this room. WDRM 102.1 is flying through this room. 92.5 WVNN is flying through this room. Way FM 88.1 is flying through this room right now. All those frequencies are buzzing around us. Are you with me? You know, the problem is I don't see it. Pastor Brad, I don't believe you. You're joshing me. Quit messing with, no, they're, they're here. 
but I can't see it, I can't feel it, I can't hear it. You know why you can't see it, feel it, or hear it? It's because you're not tuned into it. This is so good if you listen to me. You know what worship does? Worship's your tuner, my friend. Worship gets you tuned in on the frequency of his voice and his promises and his purpose in my life because God, I believe, is the good shepherd. He said, my sheep shall know my voice. You can open up your word, and you know what the word of God does? It's like that, taking that tuner on a radio dial, and it's like tuning it in and then going, oh, God, hey, I can hear you clearly now. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Oh, God, you're tuning my tuner in this morning because I've been worried that everything ain't going to work out. I've been worried about how my marriage is going to function. I've been worried about my kids. God, I thank you that you work everything out for the good of those. And I get my tuner to start being tuned in and worship my friend is that tuner that gets you into the frequency of his voice inside of your life. This is a lot better preaching than you're acting like this morning, but that's okay. Y'all just hang out with me because we're going to get our tuner tuned in this morning. Are you with me? Turn a person on your right and your left and say, tune your tuner in, all right? Help them out this morning. And so we're, we're getting tuned in to his voice and his promises inside of our life. And that's exactly what worship does. It helps me to focus on him, his promises, his word, his purpose inside of my heart. And it's amazing how whenever I get tuned in and his voice becomes so clear. See, too many times, I want to ask you a question on the opposite side. Maybe you're tuned into the wrong station in your life. Maybe you're listening way too much to Fox News and MSNBC and CNN and social media and political correctness. And you're listening too much to the voice of the enemy in your life. And you've got your radio tuned in. He's constantly saying, you're worthless. You're nothing. Nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. Nobody likes you. And you are wondering why negativity and depression, anxiety, and this is going to be a failure. And you're going to mess up. And nobody likes you. And you're doing a terrible job at your job. And, 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 and you see that. And what happens is what are you tuned into, my friend, becomes the loudest voice inside of your life. Scripture tells us this. Watch this one this morning. Psalms chapter 20, 125, verse number four. says, O oh Lord, do good to those who are good, whose hearts are in what? Tune. Come on. Whose hearts are in what? God, tune my heart to receive what your word is saying. That's exactly what worship does, my friend. Worship begins to recalibrate us to hear his voice. Worship will get my heart in the place to get my affection and my attention. Whenever I've got my radio tuned to the wrong place, I can say, God, tune my heart to hear your voice. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on the things of the ocean. Uh, it may be an old-fashioned word, but hey, set your dial, set your tone, set your, the radio knob, set your digital frequency, whatever, to, of, of your heart, of your mind, your soul, your mind, your will and your emotions on things above that, I, God, I'm going to tune into what you're saying, what you're speaking, and what you're, say, uh, what you're declaring. That's what worship looks like. Are you with me this morning? Psalm 123 verse 2 says, Behold, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of their masters and the eyes of the maid to the hand of their mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord, our God, until he has mercy on us. What's he say? What are you looking at? What are you focusing on? Worship is a declaration of our focus. All eyes on what I'm worshiping. All attention on what I'm focusing. I'm dialed into what you're speaking and what you're saying, Lord. That's what worship is. Number two, there in your notes, that worship sustains us in difficult times. This is so stinking important. Because statistically, it's during those difficult times that a lot of people will turn and, and feel rejected. A lot of people will make decisions in their life and they'll say, I feel like God's walked away from me. I feel like uh, this has happened. But I want you to write this down. Somebody's been here any length of time. You've heard me say this numerous times because I believe it's a core value in my life and my heart. But the purest praise that you will ever give your God is in the middle of your greatest pain. The purest praise you'll ever give God is in the middle of your greatest pain. And pain is a part of life, my friend. Pain will come knocking at your door. At some point, you will deal with the death of a loved one. At some point, you will have a disappointment from an employer or an employee or a friend or a coworker. Pain is going to come knocking on everybody's doorstep. And the question is, is what are you going to do with your pain? The purest praise you'll ever give your God is in the middle of the greatest pain. I remember it being at Decatur uh, General Emergency Room, holding the hand of my grandfather who I loved 
dearly watching him take his last breath and literally life leaving his body. My heart was broken in the middle of that moment. And I didn't really know what to do in process. And I wanted with everything inside of me to start quoting scripture and say, but God, you said that you answer the prayers of a righteous man. God, you said we're two agreeing gather on one thing, that you're going to do it. God, you said we can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And God, I prayed all of these prayers over my, my papa, all over my granddad. And, and God, now he just took his last breath. And there was a piece of my heart that was broken and it was hurt. And I walk out of the emergency room right by Somerville Road in Decatur, and all I need to do was to lift up my hands and say, God, I'm going to praise you, even in the middle of this moment of pain. And the refreshing and the renewing, it didn't mean there was an absence of that hurt and void of the loss of fellowship that I had with my, my granddad, but there was a peace to say, God, in the middle of this pain, I'm going to give you my purest praise because it's all I know to do. Matter of fact, it happens even biblically. I want you to watch this. Jonah chapter 2, verse number 7. Everybody knows the story of Jonah, correct? Revert back to your Sunday school lesson. Jonah had this coat that his dad gave him, and then Jonah built an ark, and all the animals came to him. I'm just kidding. That was Noah. So so Jonah was found in the belly of a whale. Jonah chapter 2, verse 7, and uh, he was disobedient. He was called to go preach the gospel to Nineveh. And uh, he tries to flee. He gets swallowed by a whale. And this is Jonah comes from uh, during that time. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. What does this mean? As the, this could have actually been translated. If my life is slipping away, it actually could have been translated as I was uh, covered and I was overwhelmed in my life and my heart. Have you ever been in a moment where you are so overwhelmed, you find yourself surrounded, and that's where Jonah is actually making this declaration from the depths of the belly of a whale. Have you ever found yourself of, of going, God, where in the world am I? I feel so overwhelmed. I feel like I, I can't get my head above water. I can't uh, even see what's in front of me. Then he's saying, in the middle of that moment, I am going to let my earnest prayer cry out to you. I'm going to get my focus on you. Acts chapter 16. This is the apostle Paul and Silas, verse number 25 and 26. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Check this out. Where were they when this was happening? They had just gotten arrested and most likely flogged and beat up. Then they get chained to a prison wall as it's dark and it stinks and it's a stench. And all of a sudden, they make a choice and decision, even in the middle of this moment, that they're still going to worship and praise God. Oh, I've heard this story before, Brad. You didn't tell me, and I don't know. The truth is, when you and I go through difficult times, most of the time we like to stick our bottom lip out and pout. Come on, somebody. Is it too real? <clears throat> most of the time we like to get on Facebook and tell everybody else our problems and say how many people feel sorry for us and go praying for you, even though they ain't ever going to pray for you. Don't even act like that. All right. Just going to type it out. Sorry, that's, that's judgmental. Jesus, forgive me for being judgmental. All right. It's asking this question of, in the middle of my biggest pain, guess what? Worship will sustain me, my friend. What did it do for Paul and Silas? They were singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Do you realize that sometimes I firmly believe you might even walk through a situation or circumstance so that your worship can pour out into other people's lives, that other people are watching how you act, how you live, where your faith's at, what's, what's inside of you. You really don't know what's inside of somebody or what's inside their glass until that glass gets bumped. Are you with me this morning? I watched somebody get bumped into, and all of a sudden there's an explosion of anger and hate and rage, and they're mad, and they're ticked off, and they're upset, and all these emotions are coming out of their life. That didn't come on them. That was already in them. Are you with me this morning? But there's a cry of worship in our heart. Just a a few months ago, um, there was some bad weather coming through. And uh, whenever that that bad weather was coming through, they they beep, beep, were coming up on the news thing. And uh, one of my children, y'all know I don't like to pick on my kids from the platform, right? All right. And uh, so one of my children, they, they get in the floor and they put their hands up there. They said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. They start crying. And I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. And I'm giggling. Bad dad, right? <laughs> and so, but I was like, I said, thank you, God, that their first reaction was to call on your name. Hello? That their first reaction in the middle of a storm, in the middle of adversity is to call on your name. They say, God, I need you. I need you to sustain me. And here's what happens to Paul and Silas is they 
people are watching their life and not only did their worship, all of a sudden there was a great earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and just Paul and Silas's chains fell off. No, my friend, it says everyone, everybody, if you're from the ghetto, everybody is, <laughs> everybody's chain were loosed. That your worship has the ability to affect your family and those who are closest to you. Come on, somebody. Your attitude, your worship, your praise has the ability to affect your sons, your daughters, your spouse. When you make a choice and decision to say, God, I'm putting you first. I'm going to make worship a holy habit inside of my life and I'm going to lean into you. It has the ability to loose chains on those who are in bondage and sin. It has the ability to transform your coworker because the attitude you decide to walk in. Are you all with me this morning? Number three there inside of your notes, worship brings transformation. What do you mean transformation? The Bible teaches this real plainly. First, second Chronicles chapter 20. I love this. Pastor Anthony and the band, y'all go ahead and come up with me this morning. What if we did military warfare like this again? Here's what happened. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. So they were getting ready to go to battle. They were getting ready to go to war. And instead of calling up the Rambo and the Jean-Claude Van Damme and the Chuck Norris, all right, he says, give me the praise and worship team to come and go first. Huh? I thought like the praise and worship team just kind of hang out in the back. When y'all, y'all get back from fighting, we're going to sing y'all some songs. <laughs> No, we we want you to go first. I believe this is a beautiful picture that God was showing us. Do you want to tell you how to fight your greatest battles in your life, my friend? Start with worship. Brad, what do I do when life ain't going the way I want to go? Worship. What do I do when I have a bad day? Worship. What do I do when somebody gives me a report? The doctor gives me a report I don't want to, I don't, I really didn't want to get worship. What do I do when my boss fires me? Worship. What do I do when somebody causes road rage to want to come out in my life? Worship. What do I do when my kids disobey? Worship. What do I do when me and my spouse disagree? Why don't you take a moment and worship? Say, so what, what are you trying to say is that worship becomes a part of our lifestyle. And instead of allowing despair and frustration and anger and hate to come out of our life, We truly begin to take serious and say, God, it doesn't mean you've got to stand up on your desk at work and lead everybody in the hymnal of awesome God, all right? All right, now your part. (laughs) No. It's that ability to go, God, it's about you. A few days ago, me and Coop, my nine-year-old, we were riding down the road. We had some worship music going on. We were both singing, and we're going to make a CD one day that nobody's going to buy, but it's okay. In the spirit of the Lord, I really just felt, feel the car. Did I catch him looking at me? We're singing. Because worship's a lifestyle, my friend. It's a thing we embrace. It says that they sang this song of giving thanks to their faithfulness. And the very moment they begin to sing and give praise, what did God do? The Lord caused the armies of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. Your worship will confuse your enemies. Those thoughts been trying to pull you down, pull you back. Your worship will confuse your enemies. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1 teaches this. It says this, I urge you therefore, brothers, watch this. I want you all to find the music in this verse, right? Find the guitar and the harp and the piano. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your true and proper what? Wait a second, I, did, I missed press the play on my iPod. I, I, no, he's saying all of a sudden your lifestyle becomes worship. 
and say, my mind, my heart, my life, my attitude, my service, everything I do to you, God, is worship. Whether you're a doctor, an engineer, you're an administrator, you're a, an education professional, you're a, a T, whatever you are, that you say, God, everything in my life would give you worship. And I begin to change my focus and my adoration and attention to my affection. I begin to realize everything I do, I do it as if I'm doing it unto the Lord. And then I have some habits that I'm embraced in my life. And so I want to leave you with just kind of a two-word thing that you can put in your hopper and carry out with you today when we realize what all worship will do. But I want to introduce you to a praise break. Are you ready? So what do you mean? A praise break. You're pushing your cart through Walmart, and God knows you need the presence of the Holy Spirit and the manifest omnipresence of Jesus Christ to go to Walmart. And uh <laughs> But you say, hey, God, I wonder if you'll show up where you're invited. And you start giving him a praise break right in the middle of Walmart. And I ain't saying you got to get your tambourine out and da 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 All right, whatever. I can't dance like some of my brothers and sisters. I, I, I mean, you got to sing at the top of your lungs, but you just take a moment to say, God, I'm going to focus on you. You're sitting at your desk and say, God, I'm going to hit the pause button and I'm going to focus on you. Praise break. I'm going to love you. I'm going to get my radio tuned into you, God. I'm going to just focus. I'm driving down the road, and God, I'm going to focus on you for a moment, maybe two minutes, maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes, but just that praise break. You and your spouse maybe having a little bit of tension point. God, I'm going to take a, uh, hit the pause button, have a praise break. Maybe you're, you're frustrated with your kids because you done told them 22 times to pick their clothes up and to go do this and to get up and turn the TV off and go do your homework and, and say, Paul's button, God, help me to, to have a praise break. And I'm going to put you first that I have a holy habit of a praise break in my life. Are you, are you with me? To say, God, I need worship to flow forth from who I am. Doesn't mean you're weak or wimpy. It doesn't mean that you don't tell the truth, but you always walk with the character and the honor of God inside of your life. That I'm his and he's mine. Are you Come on, from front to back, side to side this morning. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to pray this prayer after me and I want you to ask this simple question that we ask every week. And that question is, Holy Spirit, how does this apply to me? There was a great man of God, a revivalist by the name of Charles Finney. There's other people that would attribute this quote to other people, but most commonly I've heard Charles Finney is the one who said it, but he said he never goes, he never prays longer than five minutes, but he never goes five minutes without praying. Wow. God, that we live a life that is worship to you. And worship is a subject that will be preached on for 50 weeks, my friend, because you can get into biblical worship and it means to extend your hands and to kneel before the Lord and to lay prostrate and there's worship that comes in the form of a shout. There's worship that comes in the form of be still and know that I am God. There's worship that comes in the form of a song. There's worship that comes in the form of a dance. There are worship biblically from a biblical perspective that comes in many shapes and sizes, my friend. But at the end of the day, I believe the greatest worship we can ever give our God is a life and a heart that is postured and focused towards him. That you say, God, I'm going to worship. Even as Romans says, all creation declares your glory. The trees worship you. The sun and the moon worship you, that the, that the animals cry out to you. God, I believe today, Lord, as we sit before you this morning, Father, that you'd give us a heart of worship that is in tune with you, that would focus on you, that would love you, that would have a holy habit of worship and praise and declaration of who you are. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we welcome you in this place. Church family from front to back, side to side, those who are watching via our live stream, don't, don't click off the live stream right now, my friend, but I want you to have a praise break moment right there where you're at watching with me. I want you to pause and say, God, I need you. I need you in my life. I welcome you in my home, wherever you're watching from, your work. It doesn't matter, my friend. Maybe you're watching this at a later date. He'll show up where he's invited. So come on, in this auditorium, I ask you to stand on your feet with me this morning. Can we have a praise break moment before we walk out of this place? 
Can we have a moment of focus and adoration of attention to our Lord and Savior who's more than worthy? See, it doesn't matter if you feel him or not. It doesn't matter if, if you're emotional or not. It doesn't matter if, 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 if you like the song or not because it's not about you. It's about the fact that he is God, he is good, and he is sovereign. And today, I can worship him every minute of every moment, God. I can have a heart and affection that's pointed towards you. Come on, from front to back, side to side. Then I'm going to ask Pastor Anthony to lead us in one last moment, one last song, one last element of worship worship to say, God, we're going to have a praise break right now. God, we're going to ask you to help us let worship be a part of our life and our lifestyle of who you've called us to be. God, that we get our focus, our attention. God, that we give you the purest. Maybe somebody in here, you're walking through a moment of pain in your life. Can I help you today to give him the purest praise you can give him and say, God, God, I'm going to worship you in the middle of this moment. God, I want to be yours and you be mine. Come on, from front to back, side to side. Pastor Anthony will release us here in a moment, but we're going to give him a worship right here. Let's give him a praise right here in this moment because he is worthy church family. God, we lift you up this morning. Come on, make it visual. Make it vocal. Declare who he is this morning. Father, we thank you. Sing this with him. Father, we love you, Jesus. That is, come on, tell him. Father, we love you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness of my God. Hey, well, I am so honored that you have taken a few minutes out of your busy schedule to join us via technology in our online campus. And I want to give you a personal invitation to not just join us online, but actually join us in person. Our Coleman campus meets at 9 and 11, located there just off exit 299 south of Coleman. And then our Hartzell campus meets at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 every single week where we would love for you and your family to connect in, to be a part of a local body uh, of loving and caring people. There's something for absolutely every age group. And if we can serve you in any way, form or fashion, drop us a comment there in the comment section. We would love to pray for you. We would love to be a part of the journey that Christ has you on as we're all just trying to live life forward as followers of Christ. God bless you. You have